my heart was yeah. like beating so fast and then i remember i started like seeing things like just so scared that was traumatizing yeah. for me i literally could not like recover for like a month just lay down in complete sh fear for like hours my heart rate was so high so i would just cry for hours and i dm like people who knew uh, my friend wash my hands my hands were all bloody they had like all these scars on them from how much i washed my hands i couldn't touch certain things before filming because i'd be scared that people in the videos would be able to see what i touched i never thought i could go back to feeling happy again terrible i could not get out of bed i wouldn't shower for days i wouldn't brush my teeth i couldn't do anything what up guys welcome to another episode of santa cruz medicinals radio i have my friend cookie king here uh man i've known this dude for a little bit now we recently went to la together a few weeks ago he's super funny absolutely love his content but why we wanted to kind of get on a podcast today is because he's been trying to dial in his health it's been kind of a constant it's been a health journey for you over the last couple of years wouldn't you say oh yeah uh on the negative uh going in the negative but yeah sometimes going in the negative you've had some good progress though oh yeah i would say yeah know, overall um why don't you tell the viewers who are you where are you from all that so i am my name is demir uh i go by cookie king um or i went by cookie king for a while but over the past two years i've kind of expanded my content and now you know i'm kind of just known as the walking dead guy but also just cookie so, um, you know, I do a lot of content, Walking Dead videos. I do, um, especially right now, I have an account where I just kind of just talk to people, like literally just my life. Um, and I think a lot of people like that. A lot of people appreciate that. And I think it's something that, um, Brendan, you kind of do that on your Santa Cruz Paleo account, yeah. right? Um, I think it's really important to have that because it solidifies yourself and it makes your it makes it not a fan base, but like a community. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, I completely agree. I just like share a lot of what's going down in my life overall. Um, why, what uh, the Cookie King name? Like, where did that even? I have a whole history of social media I've been doing, but it's like a really long story. So I could just start from the TikTok if you if you. Guys... Yeah, you, you can start from wherever, dog. It's a podcast. You can All right, you know what? Whatever, I guess yeah. I'll just explain it because a lot of people have been interested about the whole story of how I got into content creation. Yeah. Um, so... Basically, you're, I mean, you're eight. You're 18 years old. Yeah. By the way, I think it's important for people to know he's 18. Yeah, I'm 18. Um, so like, there's just like this new generation of these young content creators that it fascinates me for real. Like, one of the things that was so funny was when we booked our place in LA. Uh, you know, he was like, "Where are you staying in LA?" I'm like, "Well, I'm staying at the Ritz." You know, like, you know, I'm 31 years old. I should be staying at the Ritz, hopefully. Um, and he was booking the same hotel. He's like, "Wow, it's an expensive hotel." And one thing you said, you were like, all right, I just spent like a bunch of money. I'm going to need to record a few videos over there to make this money back. <laughs> yeah. And that like to people that are maybe watching this, like they'd be like, what? Like that's, that's crazy. So mm -hmm. that's just a random thing. But yeah, how did it all kind of start? Like, yeah. So, um, ever since I was like, I think seven or something like that, I, I had been adamant that I wanted to be a YouTuber. I even put it in my fifth grade yearbook quote. I said, I want to have a million subscribers on YouTube. And I remember I got like made fun of for that. Um, and I think it was when I, I was seven, I started a YouTube channel. I called it yeah, seven. It was well, yeah, it was jelly bean MLG, uh, kind of like the trends at the time, MLG, call of duty, whatever dumb names. Um, and I was so like, I, it was terrible, low quality videos. I would just like set up, I think my mom's or no, yeah, my mom's phone and I'd play on my iPad or it would be like screen recordings for my PlayStation. And I did s seven videos a day. Um, and this is something that I'll talk about later, but I think it's something to do with my OCD, but I had to do seven videos a day. So whether it was just completely terrible content, um, but I already had this like structure where I would make certain trends on my own. Like one of them was like, I forgot what it was. It was something like kid, uh, it's like a series of me like, getting hurt mm -hmm. um and so i would just like it would be like me, like 10 second videos and it'd be like part two part three like one video would be knocking my head into the wall the other would be like me tripping but obviously they were fake but it was just hundreds of parts i made um and you know i only had like 200 subscribers um and i would do like i downloaded these apps uh like sub for sub apps where you can just subscribe to people when you get subscribers so i was kind of cheating my way to get subscribers because mm -hmm. uh, i thought it was cool uh but that led to a lot of inactive subscribers um and yeah, that channel didn't really go anywhere. Um, I would at, at one point, this is like the first time I like capitalized on something. It's very small. 
this new game came out on the app store and I just downloaded it and made a video about it and it got like 2000 views overnight, which was like kind of crazy to me. I'm like, wow. So like if I'm kind of like on top of things, like, and I was only like seven years old at the time. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I was really young, but I kind of like, I'm like, okay, well that, that's good to know. Um, and then I think, you know, that channel stagnated really hard. Uh, but I think towards fourth grade, my grades got really bad in school because I was so addicted to the social media, mm -hmm. YouTube. I wanted to be a YouTuber. And I had, a, I had a school conference with my teacher, my mom, and my dad. My grades, we went by points, z uh, zero to four. Mm -hmm. So imagine four is like an A, whatever, zero is like an F. I, was, I had like all ones and twos mm -hmm. in school. And so... Yeah, and so we were talking about it, and she knew about my YouTube channel because I would always talk about it in class. Like, it was just like, I was so happy about it, right? Like, I was yeah. so um, enthusiastic. Yeah, you had about drive it. and passion for YouTube, for yeah. creating content. What did your parents think of it? Um, that's interesting. Honestly, I don't think they really like cared. I don't. I, I don't think they really understood at the time. Um, I will get into that, especially in the later half of when I got really more serious into it. Um. But at this time, I don't think they really even like understood what I was mm -hmm. doing. Uh, they just knew I loved making, filming what I was doing. And then when you had that like parent teacher conference, what, yeah, so this is what I'm really interested in getting into is just sort of how this goes for people because he's open to talking about it. Basically, this is going to go down a road in which you eventually are prescribed multiple psychiatric drugs, yes. which you currently are on right now. Yes. And he's having some issues with that and thoughts about that. Um, and this is not going to be something, guys, where I, I'm not an ignorant person, so I'm not going to tell them, you need to get off these. It's not even how it works, mm -hmm. first of all. So that's not what I'm here today to do is just stop them. That That's not actually a good idea or what I would recommend. We'll get into what I recommend. But this whole process goes on every single day, multiple times across the United States right now with young kids. It happened to me um, when I was young. Um, I was probably 11 or, or 12, and I was getting into some trouble in school, you know, like basic stuff. And my mom took me to a, psych a psychiatrist, and that psychiatrist, within a few meetings, said that I had ADHD and, want and put me on an ADHD med. I took it two or three times, didn't like the way it made me feel. In the mornings, my mom would give this pill to me, and I would, when I was walking to school, I'd throw it in the bushes. I don't know, some dogs or cats were eating it and getting hyped up. I am so thankful that I never did that, that I never took that, because what ended up happening is, you know, I didn't do very well in uh, school when I was younger. And then when I ended up finding something that I wanted to focus on and dialing in my health, I got into UC Santa Cruz. I got A's there. I did very well at UC Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. So that's just an interesting sidebar. But so you go to this parent-teacher conference. They're kind of like, hey, he's not focusing. He's not doing well in school. What happens after that? So, okay, this is the whole thing about the ADHD. That comes later on. This mm -hmm. was definitely like the biggest heartbreak I ever felt, but... We came to the consensus. The teacher was like, you should delete your YouTube channel. Oh, my God. And I ended up deleting my YouTube channel. I remember I made, like, one final video. I was, like, crying. I was like, guys, I got to delete my YouTube channel. My teacher said so. So I deleted the channel. I just remember, like, I felt so terrible because that's something you can't undo. Yeah. Like, I could have just, like, maybe just privated all the videos and said, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah, it's deleted. There's no video. But I deleted it, and like I just remember how like distraught I felt, and that's a piece of history that's gone forever. For well, me. yeah, and it's a creative outlet. I think people aren't really understanding how creative social media is. So if a kid is really into theater and they want to go into Broadway and they act in plays, they are really celebrated by most parents. You know, like uh, my mom's generation would celebrate that. Oh my God, this kid is into you know acting, and they're in theater, and this is amazing. But if there was a kid being, and I told my mom, hey, they post a lot of YouTube videos every single day. They're getting subscribers. They do these little skits. Okay, that would be viewed differently. Yeah. Even though it's a creative outlet for you as a young child, seven, eight years old, being able to be creative and learn a technology that now is ubiquitous and super important and a skill that you could, you know, do stuff with. But, you know, it's not their fault. They didn't know. They just, yeah. yeah, and another thing is, this was 10 years ago, right? Yeah. So YouTube was looked at a lot differently then, um, especially with the rise of TikToks and everything. I think it really seemed like a dream. Like, they were just like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact that I'm in the single digits of age, obviously they're going to be like, you're not going to... Yeah, I mean, I obviously I'm not going to be having a million subscribers at eight years old, right? Um, 
Although today now there's, you know, there was a kid who like he unwraps gifts or something, or unwraps toys or something, right? And he made like $20 yeah. million dollars a year. But they're usually managed by their parents, right? Yeah, so, that's true. Which is smart, but I hope, I hope the kids are having fun doing that. I hope they're not kind of forced to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and then later on, I created another YouTube channel. I'm like, why did I listen to my teacher? Like, and I created another one. I think it was in like fifth grade. This one was like the first time I started to get some real traction. Um, yeah, I mean, I made a lot of videos, but then I ended up doing these like, um, I came, I came, I became kind of desperate to get views. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people know, but I had this uh, beef with Jack DeHorty. He's, you know, that guy who, you know, has all the, uh, does all those kick streams and has the bodyguards, right? Um, he used to, uh, I, I, I remember seeing him when he first blew up. Uh, he used to do these, like, he would do water bottle flips. Uh, he wasn't, like, a water bottle flip channel, but he had a video that blew up with it. And then that's when I kind of, like, really started, I guess, clout chasing. I wanted to do anything that got views. So I would do water bottle flips, marker flips. I would fake them. I would, uh, you know, do anything to get views. And then I started to, like, really get good at thumbnails. So, like, mm -hmm. I would try to, I started to understand the psychology of thumbnails, like, uh, color coding, how, like, yeah. colors reflect. And so, yeah, I had like a thousand, two thousand subscribers. And then this is probably like the, I, I, I did not know how to handle any sort of criticism or being made fun of at this mm -hmm. point. So this was, this was about to go through like hell in the next few years. So I started doing these diss tracks, right? Rice gum was doing those. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know them, right? Uh, those were blowing up. And so I just started to do them. I was dissing my hate comments, right? And then uh, it did really good. And then people from my school, like started hearing about it. And you know they were like they were like yo this is fire it wasn't fire I think they were kind of making fun of me and then I brought it to a point where I started dissing people from my school okay um, so like I'd put up images of them um, usually it was like in a friendly manner um, I think there was only yeah no I think every single time I did it like it was fine and it was so funny because all the viewers had no idea who they were from the school but they all loved it oh, yeah. like it, they're just they found it so funny that I'm just roasting people who go to my school right. Um, but like I said, I didn't know how to handle criticism. And then I remember this kid made a diss track on me, some random guy. And I remember like literally crying. I'm like, dude, my, my career is over. I, I thought it was, I thought the world revolved around me. I'm like, dude, yeah. like, his video got like a thousand views in a week. I'm like, oh my God, like, I, I don't know what to do. And like, I was literally like panicking for a month straight. Mm -hmm. That's how it, like, like, and it's crazy. I wish I knew how to handle my emotions better back then because um, you know, I, and, and then people would like make fun of me for my diss tracks. They would start like playing it in front of me. And I remember just like getting so angry, like almost physical. Like I remember like, I don't know, I, I would just get so angry about it. And I thought everyone was like out to get me. I thought they were all jealous. And middle school was absolute hell, bro. Because I just like, and like, I remember this one time we were having this school meeting like a you know representative came about bullying they were talking about bullying everyone was in the cafeteria and then this kid takes the microphone he's like uh what if you're a bully like and my, my channel was called dems so my mm -hmm. name is demir i went by dems i said what if you're a bully like dems and you make uh diss tracks about people and the whole like everyone was like oh and i, I remember just like my heart sank and like i i, I was like oh my god it was so bad yeah um, and like it's crazy because now if that happened to me like I would honestly find that so funny. Like, yeah. but I, you know, geez, that really messed with me back then. And I, I, it, it makes me feel really bad for my younger self, dude. Mm -hmm. I went through a lot that I didn't need to go through. Um, and then, yeah, so that's what happened with that channel. And then I kind of stopped after I found TikTok. Mm -hmm. So this was around eighth grade. I found TikTok, maybe seventh grade. Well, actually it was musically, musically. But I just did some lip sync videos, some dumb ones. I, I did the follower for follower thing again. I got like 7,000 followers, all non-existent. I got like zero likes per video. Uh, but then TikTok came. And then I really saw a lot of opportunity because there were some people blowing up making funny videos. And I'm like, you know, I've been doing this YouTube stuff. I feel like I could, you know, transfer that. So I started making some videos and like some of them low-key started doing good. And then by like the end of eighth grade, I had like 10,000 followers. I had made some like pretty... Like some people now that are following me remember those videos from back oh, then, yeah. for example. Yeah. Like that's how they did, they did pretty good. And so, yeah. And then this is where it gets kind of bad because this is where the paranoia started to set in. Mm -hmm. um, the OCD, especially. 
Um, so, you know, I was making some good videos and I, I got up to like 50,000 followers over time. Um, and I was just super like superstitious about posting though. Like it had to be a certain way, all the stuff I'd freak out if a video did bad. And then by the way, do you, do you know what a shadow ban is? Yeah. Do you believe in that? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, shadow bans on, on TikTok are real. I, I talked about, um, I tried to hide the word, but hitting the ZA and going to the gym and the science behind the ZA, you know, hitting weed yeah. and going to the gym. Um, and after I posted that video, uh, yeah, my channel struggled for a little while because it's not something you're supposed to talk about. It's obviously against their, you know, guidelines. So then I did another one uh, recently where it was taking a microdose of, uh, you know, some little, little mushroom thing and oh, yeah, uh, the that. science behind that and going to the gym on that. And doing those videos, yeah, I do believe a shadow ban is real. They have certain content that they want to push, especially right now with all the heat on some of these social media platforms. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm kind of on the edge about it because I have been shadow banned twice. And I, I know for a fact, even though I'm someone who doesn't believe in it anymore, which I'll get into. Um, so I, I hit like 60,000 followers at one point and I felt like on top of the world. My ego was so high because I'm a freshman in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 60,000 followers, like what, what 14 year old, 13 year old has that, right? Yeah. So like in high school, so you're in high school in Los Gatos at that point. Yeah. Or what? Well, I, I went to Lee. Yeah. But okay. yeah, well, in, I was in Los Gatos. Yeah. Um, and so like, what is it like being in high school and having followers? Are there other people with followers? Does the followers bring you any like status in high school? Like, what is that like? So it's weird because I, I never really had like had status, but like, I don't know how to say it. Like I, I started to hang out with the popular kids after I got followers because I felt like I belonged there after, mm -hmm. uh, even though I hated it. I mean, those kids, no, no, no disrespect to any of those kids. Actually, some, some of them are really nice, actually. Sure. Um, uh, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm forcing myself into a group. If anything, I also feel bad for them. They, they, sh I shouldn't have to force myself into a group with them. They already have their thing going on. Um, but yeah, you know, I was just trying to act like a different person. Um, and some other people had some viral TikToks and they got like 10,000, 20,000 followers. I remember just like, I was so scared that someone was going to pass me. Like that's how competitive it was to me. Um, Interesting. Like it's, it's honestly insane because I don't, and it's insane because like I can tell you truthfully, I do not think like that anymore. I don't mm. think like, I don't get that like anger anymore. Um, I still do obviously have some bad way of dealing with certain things, but it's crazy how much you can change just from like growing up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so let, let's fast forward a little bit. So when in high school, how did it go down where you were first prescribed ADHD meds? Okay, so this was, yeah, this is actually in, in freshman year. So yeah, that's when it commonly is. I would say high school, middle school, like late years in middle school. High yeah. school is when it starts to matter, right? So yeah, when grades start to matter. Parents, exactly. I mean, it comes from parents and school counselors. Yeah. Uh, this is the... This is the pipeline to getting prescribed psych psychiatric medications is through school and parents, uh, school counselors, teachers. Um, that is the pipeline in the United States to get prescribed this stuff. So you're in high school, you know, uh, 14, 15 years old, something like that. 14. 14. Um, At the time of getting prescribed, yeah. And how does that start? What, what happened there? So um, my grades were absolutely terrible, um, like worryingly terrible uh i'd say like d's and f's um they were just they were just really bad um and so i genuinely believed i had adhd and it was my parents they're just like no no you don't you don't have that i kind of and so my this is a whole thing but my parents were you know, not that close anymore. They ended up divorcing like not too long. Uh, I'd say like in sophomore, before sophomore year, they, so like at the end of freshman year, they divorced. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, that can be chaotic. My parents are divorced too. So yeah, yeah know, it can be a little chaotic. So I was a lot closer with my mom though. Like, and so I kind of eventually like was talking to her. I'm like, Hey mom, like, can we please just go to like a psychiatrist? Right. I told her everything. We did some evaluations. She first said, like, you know, try changing up your diet. Try this and that. Uh, That's good. Fish oils and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was me, though. I, I kept saying, like, no, no, no. I want to get on medication. Um, yeah. Uh, did you view the medication as, like, you're like, I can't focus on this stuff in school. So 
this medication will help me refocus on school. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just... I, do, you, do you see the sort of ridiculousness in this, though, where you now have 2.3 million followers on TikTok? 2.8. 2.8 like, million followers on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. You were building that on, you know, during this time, pretty much. You're building your social media to, overall. You're cranking out videos. You are focused on something, right? Yeah. The, the proof is in the pudding. You're focused on something. This thing that you built has also made you, we're not going to get any exact numbers, it's made you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. That's fair. Yeah. So I just want to bookmark that for people watching this, is that this isn't somebody who is failing at everything. Mm -hmm. You weren't. You weren't yeah. failing at every single thing. You were actually very successful at something. Yeah. But you were not successful at these classes. Yeah. So that's interesting right there. So, and then you're like, you are kind of the one at this point going like, I think I want to get on these ADHD meds. I think they'll help me focus and do better in school. I feel a bit unfocused. Yeah. I mean, as a 14 year old, when I heard about their existence, I'm like, wait, so you're telling me you could take a pill that literally could just boost your grades. That's what I thought of at the time mm -hmm. when it's really that's not just, like that. No, that's what a lot of people think about it. And I was just like, get me on that. Like, mm -hmm. get me on that. I, I've been struggling in school all my life. Why not just lock in and not have to worry about school ever? And I could do TikTok all the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so I was really pushing it with her. I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And then we did this evaluation. That was the dumbest thing ever. It was like this. I think yeah, it's were, the it's the test that yeah. There, there's a test that was invented basically by the companies that made the ADHD meds. They sponsored a program at Harvard and at some other colleges to make a questionnaire that can get somebody prescribed ADHD meds because it is, some people say it's impossible, some people say it is possible, but either way, it is very difficult to prove somebody has ADHD through brain scans, through MRIs. So, and definitely you can't do it through a blood test or anything like that. Uh, there really is no biomarkers that we know of ADHD um, because again, this disease, in my opinion, was completely invented and fabricated. I'm not saying people don't have issues focusing on stuff. That's oh, yeah. real. Um, but the ADHD diagnosis was invented because there was a Swiss chemist and he was playing tennis with his wife, Rita, and they were trying to find a different version of an amphetamine that would help focus. And they, he gave Rita this pill when they were playing tennis and she was like, this is the one, you've found it. He called it Ritalin after his wife, Rita. And then they started giving it to soldiers, you know, a lot of soldiers have taken amphetamines. And then they figured, well, this does help people focus. How can we get this into, into the United States and prescribed? And this was their way to do that. Um, ADHD meds can definitely help some people focus on school. I don't think that's a myth. I think that would be, duh. People take these on the legal market all the time to help them study. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So, okay. So there you are. You've taken this questionnaire. You get prescribed ADHD meds. And I want to say something. It was not a question. I, I did a questionnaire, but the, the finalized test, this was the dumbest thing ever. She was just showing me images and telling me, what do I see first? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah those, yeah. I, I don't know how that correlated at all, but after taking it, I was just, I, I was diagnosed with ADHD mm -hmm. and I was like, finally, like I could get, um, prescribed something. And I felt so guilty about that because I, I knew I kind of forced my way into it, but I do think I have ADHD, but I really wish I didn't think about it like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I was young, but, uh, yeah. And then, so I finally got prescribed something. I can't remember what I got prescribed first. It might've been like Concerta or something gave me a headache, didn't really work. And then finally, the one that finally worked was Vyvanse. Um, and this is like early into the school year, I think. This is like September, mm -hmm. maybe October, not, not, not too far in. And then so I finally just like, I felt focused. Like it was crazy. Uh, my grades all skyrocketed. Like I got emails. My, my parents got emails from my teachers just like in shock. Like Demir completely turned it around because I was like so foolish. I like would mess around in class all the time. And I just went to just locked in. Do you think there's any sort of placebo effect there where you go, I need, yeah? yeah. Oh, 100%. hundred percent. You know, it's crazy because I could have been taking a fake pill. Mm -hmm. I still wouldn't know it to this day because For sure. I, I think literally 90% of things can be placebo. Um, I, I could be getting prescribed fake pills. And, you know, some people even, they did a study where they took 
placebo pills. And after being told they were placebo, they still couldn't get off it. They were having mm -hmm. withdrawals. Oh, for sure. So it just shows that it's all in your head, right? Yeah, if you take something and you're like, I'm going to be able to lock in at school right now and uh -huh. I'm going to focus, I'm going to kill this because I have this like kind of, you know, beneficial compound that is going to help me study and focus in school and not be distracted, then you're probably going to do that. Yeah, and uh, another time is like a year or two ago, I remember the specific day, I got my ADHD medication and I thought I took it, but I actually put it in my pocket because I was supposed to drink it with water and it was the water was downstairs and I thought I took it. I completely <laughs> forgot. And it was like two hours afterwards and like I, I literally felt the effects. I'm like, all right, I, I might go get some work done. And then like I felt in my pocket. I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even take it. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. there's no way. Like I literally, I felt it though. Mm -hmm. So that just shows it's just like... Maybe. And then, so what happened, so being on a stimulant, so what happened to your sleep, your appetite, like all of that? So, you know, at first it wasn't really bad. Um, so I, I, when I first started taking it in freshman year, I actually didn't really like it that much. Mm -hmm. um, once COVID hit, oh my God, there's actually a lot to this. Uh, I haven't talked about this publicly, so I don't know if I want to say it, but. Whatever you want to talk about, yeah. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I should say this, man. I've, I was debating it for the longest time. I'll say it right now, but let me know. So ugh, this is crazy, but I used to like vape from like early oh, freshman. Crazy. Yeah. No, no, but I was so addicted to it. Uh -huh. And I hadn't even started puberty yet. Mm -hmm. And so I quit right as COVID started. So I was going through severe nicotine withdrawals yeah. as COVID started. I think that's really common for people your age to be doing nicotine like that and vaping. I mean, it's a... It, it's a huge problem. So like how, when did that start? Like how, how much were you doing all that? Yeah. So th this is why I think it's really different in my case. So I started at the end of eighth grade, uh, like summer. I remember, I, I don't remember how I started doing it, but I remember I bought my own off Amazon. I remember just being so excited for it. Uh, and I got like this vape juice that was three milligrams of nicotine, um, uh, which is if anyone who vapes out there, I'm sure some people who are watching struggle with that. Three milligrams of nicotine is nothing like Anyone who does it and is addicted, mostly they do 50 milligrams, which feels like a cigarette for perspective. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so uh, yeah, and then I got that and I was just doing it. I thought it was fun, three milligrams of nicotine. I was doing it. And then I only did it for three days, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went to Turkey and I had the worst withdrawals. Only off three milligrams of nicotine. Think about yeah. that. That's like nothing. And then I realized like, holy shit, like, I'm kind of screwed mm -hmm. because I know I'm going to go straight back home and get back into it. I'm never going to be able to quit this thing. Damn. Uh, and then that's when I realized I had an addictive personality. And then that's when I realized I started asking my family, everyone in my family smokes. And so I realized I am so susceptible to a big addiction. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I said this yet. I had not hit puberty. Uh, I hit puberty like where my voice actually started getting deeper, like voice cracks in the beginning of sophomore year. So mm -hmm. this was eighth grade. So I was like a chubby little kid. So just for perspective, it's like seeing a fifth grader doing it because I was like at that stage still. I started puberty really late. Um, so it's really shocking to think that a kid my age was going through that. And how are you getting these nicotine cartridges, Amazon online? So, yeah, you know, it's crazy because before it like really got popular, you could actually buy them off Amazon uh, if you looked hard enough. And so I remember it, it takes a little bit of searching, but I found them. And so, yeah, I got them. And then Turkey was just absolute hell. I just wanted to go home the entire time and mm -hmm. uh, vape again. And I got home, I started vaping, and then that's when I started upping the nicotine. Um, so at this point you're on, you're vaping. Oh, and I hadn't started and the... You hadn't started ADHD. I magic. started the ADHD, and then after I started the ADHD, that's when things got a little bit interesting. Because then I was vaping and on the medication. Yeah, so you're on nicotine and... Vyvanse. Vyvanse at this point, so... And if, and I know a lot of people out there who struggle or who do weed or, or, or vape, they talk about when they're on their medica or ADHD medication, when they do that with that, it's a completely yeah. different experience. I've had people compare saying that nicotine while you're on ADHD medication, they say if, if they've done multiple drugs, they say it's like cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, yeah, it felt really good. Um, and I remember in the first month I was doing vaping, like really heavy, I, each time I, first time I'd hit in the morning, I get like a buzz basically. Like, oh yeah. I'd almost like pass out. And I remember that went away one day and I was like, holy shit, like now I'm addicted. Damn. Um, and were you, were you like a pretty clean cut kid in terms of like 
weed, alcohol, and all that in high school like is like pretty common. Uh, were, you, were you staying away from that? Because um, you don't smoke weed. No, but uh, I actually skipped over this too. Um, right, I I think after I came back from Turkey, I wanted to also try weed, and so I did it a few times with my friends, very light, um, and it felt fine. But then I did it once. Um, on the 4th of July Mm -hmm. after eighth grade, right? So uh, 4th of July and the next month. And for people, we're in California. That is extremely common. Oh yeah. Everybody eighth, ninth grade is probably the most common time when they try weed. Yeah. Other States people, it's a little bit later sometimes. Yeah. Um, so basically I remember still, I'm like a little kid. Right. And I think that's really important to like know, because I feel like when you're in your later stages, um, I don't know. I I always thought that was like really unique with my case. You don't Mm -hmm. see like a really like little kid doing it um, in terms of development, right? Um, Yeah, so, and then I tried my friend's wax pen and I said, how long do I hit it for? He said, I'll tell you when to stop. And so I I started sucking on it, right? And (laughs) I love that, I love that, y'all. I started, (laughs) I started, I started inhaling it. Yeah. He told me to stop after like seven seconds. He's yeah. like, he, I kept yeah. going. He's like, all right, stop. Rip. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, yeah. It turns out he was trying to get me really high. He told me later on. And when I tell you what happened was like, we were, we were walking away. As soon as I reached this like pavement, I'm not even kidding. Like I, I started hallucinating. Like I saw these curtains just like close and it said like, it literally said like, that's a wrap. Like as if like my life's over. Yeah, wow. And then I... Okay, imagine this. Imagine like, how do I say it? Oh my God, this is so weird. Um, oh, it's so hard to explain. I just kept coming back to reality. Mm-hmm. So like, oh no, okay, imagine this. Imagine like, think about the LA trip. Think about you're in a situation, it, it's like a month ago, right? Yeah. But then all of a sudden, you're just brought back to it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait, hold on, we're, we're still here? Yeah, yeah. So it felt like it's been years, but yep. then it would skip back in time. And then I remember just being so tripped out by it. It was like going years. And I come back and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm still in this situation. And like, I was just freaking out. And like, I had like two other friends with me and they were just like, what? they didn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, and they were just like, bro, calm down, calm down. And it's called derealization, by the way. Um, I've, I've been that, I've been that high multiple times in my life. Albert and I are here like, yeah, that's, that's eight through 11th grade. <laughs> my heart was yeah. like beating so fast. And then I remember I started like seeing things. Like I saw this kid walking by and like it literally zoomed in on him and it was like, identifying who it was and i was just so scared mm-hmm. and so that, after that did you kind of like just let not use weed ever again or no i i tried again because like everyone's like bro it can't be that serious and people to this day still kind of like undermine my experience they're just like bro like there's no way it was that bad like i'm like dude that was traumatizing yeah. for me i literally could not like recover for like a month yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. That's yeah. um, and it, it's still to this day. If I smell weed, I get really paranoid that I'm gonna inhale it and then I'm gonna go straight back to that because yeah. what it does is it causes like a month of suffering. Yeah. Damn. Um, and so I, I I kept trying to do it again like every few months. It was manageable, but it was just as bad. But like the like I remember I did it again. I was at this beach house and instantly I felt that feeling again where I it felt like years and I came back. I'm like. I was like, I was with like my brother and his friends. I'm like, shit, it, it yeah. happened again, guys. No, and there's there's a genetic component as well. Some people um just really feel basically like the opposite of what most people say they feel uh, hitting the weed. So, yeah, that you know. And so I'm like, guys, um, stay away from me tonight because I'm gonna be fucking terrified for the rest of the night. And so yeah, I just laid down in complete sh- fear for like hours. My heart rate was so high. Uh, definitely wasn't as bad as the first time, but yeah. Um, so no, no, not a lot of weed or alcohol for you in high school. Well, I did do alcohol at one point too. So this is really personal, but, um, when COVID hit, uh, when, hold on, when COVID hit, I started like vaping more and then I would just, I was in this phase. This was probably like the most terrible phase is I was taking like my Vyvanse and then I was getting a disposable vape. They were at the time, disposable vapes now go like for 4,000 hits, but back mm-hmm. then they only did like 300 hits. Um, it's crazy how much they evolved, man. Yeah. Um, 300 hits. 
Um, I'd go through that in a day, which is insane. Some people only do like ma- mainly people do like 20 hits a day. It's like Damn. a fix, right? Yeah. I was just like so addicted to it. I love the feeling and all my ADHD medicine. And then I play GTA five all day. So what I would do is I just get on my computer, GTA five for like six hours straight while ripping the vape pen all day, buzzed out of my mind. Damn. Um, and it, I mean, obviously it felt great, right? Yeah. Like I, 14 year old i'm just like euphoria mm-hmm. and oh and i that has to cause a, a crash this is what a lot of i worry about a lot of these young people where they like play video games for like a long time and some of these things like nicotine vapes or you know maybe on some adderall or whatever it is um there's no biological free lunch is a good expression so like you're gonna have this like nah, like feeling like really locked in but like what what were those like crashes like after that? So it's interesting. I honestly don't really remember, but I don't remember them being t- too severe. Uh, I think it's mainly because I didn't know crashes existed. Mm, yeah. Um, but nowadays cr- the crashes are really really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, especially after a long day of gaming. If I like, I, it happened yesterday. Like I I took my medication. I told myself, okay, I just want to set up. I play. I've been playing so much Minecraft lately. I'm just like, I want to set up my AFK farm. Just go there. And then I'm going to stay with my computer. Next thing I know, it's been four hours of playing Minecraft. I stand up. I'm like, it's dark outside. And I'm just like, fuck. Like, yeah. what did I just do? Yeah. Um, and the medication's wearing off. Uh, almost like, it's, it's terrible. Um, yeah. Now, where, 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 what was I saying before that? Yeah, uh, I mean, basically like high school. So like, you you know, oh, yeah. it's COVID, you know, you're like yeah. in high school, you're you're hitting a bunch of kind of amphetamine pills basically and like vaping nicotine and just locking into like GTA five for like hours at a time. Um, you know, getting some schoolwork done online, I assume. So that was during the time when they didn't really know what to do yet. Oh yeah. Um, and then, so what happened was April came by and then, um, this is really like personal, but my best friend, um, like my, my best, my best friend, he's the one who helped me during those like weed when I was like freaking out. Yeah. He, um, he overdosed on, I think it was, uh, it, he, he bought either it was Percocets or Xanax or mm-hmm. both. Fentanyl laced. Yeah. yeah Fentanyl laced. And it, it was such a terrible situation because they were at his lake house. That's like mm-hmm. so remote. So, uh, you know, he was overdosed and it took 30 minutes for like a helicopter to come. Mm-hmm. And so he was in a coma and at the time I didn't know what that meant. Like, mm-hmm. Because if you go into a coma, you are not going to be the same person after. There's like a 90% chance you're going to be, I don't want to use that word that they say, but like you're going to be in a vegetative state for the rest of your life almost. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know that. I just thought like, oh, okay, he's good. Yeah. But then I started to do more research. I'm like, holy shit, he's never coming back. Yeah. Especially when it was like two months and there was no updates. I'm like, Damn. he's fucked. And I started to get really depressed. And right after that happened, I created a new TikTok account that blew up mm-hmm. like this was my biggest break yet. It got like 400,000 followers. Mm -hmm. So I was dealing with that. I was dealing with the nicotine. And then I think sometime in May, I decided to quit nicotine. It was like, I was streaming on Twitch. I'm like, guys, one second. I turn off my camera. I said, this is gonna be my last rip. Took one more rip, put it down. Never, never touch it again. Um, The withdrawals were so, so bad. I gained like 30 pounds. Uh, My relationship with my dad became terrible. Um, I was just such an ass, like asshole. I was, you know, belittling him for everything. I was just, you know, I, I, I can't really explain that to him now, right? Mm-hmm. I've told him before, but I don't think it's so shocking to tell him that I, yeah, I was, I was going through nicotine withdrawals. Like, yeah, you can't. I don't know how I can explain that to him, right? Any parents just like it's too shocking to take in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then there were a few times I relapsed almost. Like there was one time I was like going through it so bad. I think it was like August. And I remember I went in my brother's room, took a rip, and I'm like, no, 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 what did I do? And I never did it again. And I did it one more time when I was drunk. Maybe this was like 2020 December. I did mm-hmm. it one more time. And then I was like, what, why did I do that? And I've never hit it since then, yeah. ever again. So December 2020, so it's been almost four years now. That's good. Um, I never really think about it anymore. There were actually some times at my like really low points in life in 2023 where I was like, I'm like, I could do whatever I want. Why don't I just get back into vaping? But like, no, I never acted on that but then i started drinking to cope with what happened to my friend in early 2021 i was drinking a lot like every day probably and i'd play csgo all day just listen to music i would just drink uh and then i would upload a tiktok daily at like 7 30 p.m so it was just drink drink 
procrastinate till I have to film, edit, boom, go back to yeah. Oh my god! And there was another time actually, in late twenty twenty one, late twenty twenty, at my mom's house, I was drinking a lot. Like, and I think one night I did like this much, and I remember just like it was I I was the worst I'd ever been. And I'm not someone who gets aggressive when they're drunk. I'm someone who gets emotional. Mm -hmm. So I would just cry for hours, just like, and I DM like people who knew uh, my friend, especially his ex girlfriend who treated him like shit. Um, I would just like. I don't know. I, yeah. I I just like some hope that like he would just reappear as if nothing happened. Yeah. Um, and that's when my OCD got really bad. Um. Yeah, I mean, and then I think I stopped drinking like, you know, sometimes towards May twenty twenty one. I haven't looked back since on anything. Now it's just become my yeah. prescriptions, right? Yeah. So um, that that brings us to today. So exactly. High school, you graduate, and then, like, you know, what, what was, what is, like, your plan? With, so, like, right now, like, you graduate high school, like, what do you want to do? You know, everyone's like, oh, you're going to go to college, you're going to work. Like, what is, like, your, like, plan? You yeah. know, when people ask you that question. I, I, I you say that question when I was out of uh, high school. But, like, yeah, that's the question you get asked. What do you, t what do you tell people when, like, your parents, friends, or some shit are like, what are you going to do? So, I was always someone that, like, like, so for example, college, like whenever I was like asking me about their college, like, you know how it's like a topic towards the end of senior year, like people mm -hmm. are talking, oh, what'd you apply to? Anytime it came to me, I'm just like, I have no idea. I haven't even done that. Like, yeah. oh, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, dude, the deadline was like last week. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> and then, um, so, and I, but I had this confidence in me and I've always had this confidence in me. I don't know if it's like ego, but like, Whenever I'm so adamant about something, even if I'm not knowledgeable about it, like that type of situation, I have no idea. But I said that I didn't do it. I'm so confident that I'm making a good decision. Um, and I like once again, this might be an ego thing, but like most of the time, I'm I usually am right about it. I yeah. think it's just an instinctive thing. Um, so yeah, I just told myself I'm gonna do content. I I had barely made any money, probably like a total of like twenty thousand dollars off content, and I had like two million. 2.4 million followers when I graduated. But then I got monetized on TikTok, creativity program beta. That changed my life. Uh, that's what really ensured that I didn't have to go to college this year. Um, and I didn't talk about senior year of high school, but so this is really interesting with the prescription. So I was on OCD medication mm -hmm. and the Vyvanse. Mm -hmm. And how did you get prescribed the OCD med? Same same kind of thing. You go in there, oh, like no. I've been having, you know, you were, you were mentioning to me, like you went through a period of time where you like would have like OCD symptoms, like needing to turn on and off like light switches and stuff, or just like classic like OCD stuff. So th this one was, I think out of every prescription that I would want to stop taking, I don't think OCD I would ever want to. Only because this was, I, I, I'm 100% sure I have OCD. So it got really bad after what happened to my friend. I started, uh, especially with like TikTok. I remember I told you I have seven videos a day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Well, it became so severe. It was like every three days I had to post um, this and that. And then it got so bad where like I couldn't sleep. I had to like wash my hands. My hands were all bloody. They had like all these scars on them from how much I washed my hands. Um, so many things. Like I, 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 I couldn't touch certain things before filming because I'd be scared that people in the videos would be able to see what I touched and it would make the video do worse. Mm. That type of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and the videos, I had to stop filming at 18 seconds. Um, and just all this stuff, I had to stay exactly in the center of the frame. I could do a really good video, but then my head moved a little bit. Nope, over, mm -hmm. redo. Um, I was like so robotic. If you check my old videos back in like 2020, you'll see how still I was. Mm -hmm. That's all OCD. Um, and then... So you get on the medication for that. And yeah. So, what does it feel like after you start taking that? So I didn't feel it at all, actually. It's not one of those things that's like, oh, like not at all, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a f few months, but then I remember my life just like finally getting better. Like I, I'm, when I tell you it's the first time I like it, it I, I never thought I could go back to feeling happy again. Um, it's like the happiest I felt in years. And then late 2021, I, that's when I started my weight loss journey. I was genuinely the best mental state I've ever been in my life. Yeah. And that's, see, I think, you know, there's prescriptions. I think there's a really big problem with like the pharmacy stuff, but I think in certain situations, it can really help a person. Oh, for sure. I yeah. think the OCD medication, 
I don't think the OCD medication is has ever caused me problems. It's only the Vyvanse. So I wouldn't consider quitting the OCD medication because all it's done is good for me. Totally. It's never had any side effects. It's never like, literally, it saved my life. I don't think I would like- That's great. I don't think I'd be in this position today if I didn't start taking it. I don't even know if I'd be here because I was terrible. I could not get out of bed. I wouldn't shower for days. I wouldn't brush my teeth. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't leave my room. It was terrible. And so- Today, you have mentioned that like there's some aspects of like you just like don't feel good in this kind of cycle you're in. So let's dive into this cycle you're in. First, you are you basically live nocturnal. Mm -hmm. Like you live like your sleep schedule is what. You know, I wake up at like nine p.m. Whatever, go to. Uh, actually, it's always like changing up at nine p.m. Around yeah. it's it's always changing actually, um, which isn't. I'd say it's even worse than only being nocturnal because that means like yeah. something's not right i'm always changing so some days i could be waking up at like 9 a.m stay up but then the next day i, I wake up at 10 p.m right mm -hmm. um yeah so it's all over the place um and it's weird because i f feel sometimes unhappier on the days where i wake up on time uh it's really weird um do you think you're supposed to feel happy all the time um because like you were talking about when like your friend died or, or did he end up passing away? No, he's he, but I. It, it's just not in a good. State. I I saw him again. It, yeah. I mean, it really messed me up though. So, like with that, I feel like a lot of people, and this happened to me. You know, I lost a few friends in high school from overdose. Um, this overall thing that I hear you say a lot is like, oh, I want to feel happy. I want to feel happy. I think one thing you need to consider is that we aren't built to feel happy yeah. all the time. You know, we're not like we're we're literally not wired to feel happy all the time. So recognizing certain periods where you feel stress or anxiety or sad, I feel like is really important to, for a lot of people to do to understand that that's completely normal. That's not a wrong thing. That's literally being a human being. We would not have evolved to this point if we were happy all the time. That's just like kind of like a sidebar. Uh -huh. But so like. With the sleep schedule, most of the time you're you're basically sleeping at night. I mean, awake at night. And yeah. you mentioned you like being awake at night because your house is quieter. Uh, you can kind of film and get more stuff done with that. Mm -hmm. But what I would definitely say to you is there is no way, I don't think any health professional would, would ever say sleeping, being nocturnal basically is good for you. There's oh, yeah. hundreds of papers on it because of shift work, sleep disorder, people that have to work in warehouses or uh, nurses that have to work night shifts. There is tons of studies on it and research and it's pretty crazy, bro. It's like the cancer rates skyrocket, depression skyrockets, like mm -hmm. all of these things. So having that sleep schedule is pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you feel like it benefits you because you can get more stuff done? Uh you know, I, I, you know, I tend to not think like, this is kind of crazy to say, I don't think that much anymore. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> my brain is not what it used to be. Obviously I'm not saying that I'm like, not, it's just, I, I have this weird issue now where it's like my, my brain doesn't let me think about thoughts because it knows I don't want to think about it. So it just blocks it off. So whenever I try to think about it, I get like really stuck. So like, mm -hmm. I, that's why I'm like kind of confused right now because I, I want to say something, but I can't get the words for it. Yeah. Uh, which is such a weird feeling. Um, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, have you ever tried meditation? <sighs> no, I have not. No, no, never tried meditation. I think that's definitely something you should try. For and sure. it's not like a complicated thing. Like, oh, meditation. Yeah. It sounds like you're like sitting like this and like meditating. But like, I feel like it could, it could even just be like 10 minutes of just kind of sitting down and just like lying down, no phone, breathing for 10 just, minutes. Just thinking like, yeah, because, being able to be alone with your thoughts is very important. You know, the other day I told myself, so I don't, I had this really bad issue <laughs> whenever I use the restroom, you know, I do a number two, um, my legs would always fall asleep so badly and it was dangerous. Like I'd stand up and I almost fall over and I searched up, why does that happen? And it's literally from you being on your phone because you're hunched over. Yeah. And then that's what caused your legs to fall asleep. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go use the restroom without my phone. It was really hard, but it was also nice because it's the first time I thought about, like it was in the morning. I'm like, I'm just thinking about my day. Like, what can I do today? I never think like that yeah. because I'm always distracted by something. Yeah. I mean, so it's a huge issue. Um, since the age of about seven, you have been 
on computer, phone, video games, and it's completely probably rewired your brain. Your dopamine receptors, all of these neurotransmitters that you have are not built to deal with that. There's no way, it, it, there's just no possible way. Um, and like, you know, lately you've been telling me some of the, like you're just kind of like not happy taking these ADHD meds over and over again. The OCD meds you're pretty comfortable with. Is there any other thing? Yeah. yeah, so I actually take bipolar medication as well. Um, this is more recent, but I was going to tell you about senior year. Um, so this is something really dangerous, actually, that I wish I was told about, which I wasn't, is when you're taking things, not stimulants, but when you're taking things that are antidepressants, that type of stuff mm -hmm. that takes months to work, uh, you never, it's either you take it every single day yeah. or you don't take it at all you don't want to do one day you take it next day you don't the other day you take it yeah. and then like three days you don't oh, two weeks you don't and then you take it and that's what i was doing in senior year and then my life just became so bad i didn't know why and then i stopped talking to my therapist my life went to shit i gained a ton of pounds i gained a ton of weight i lost all my friends because i was such an asshole to people and i, I was so arrogant like i genuinely felt like the best person like i would literally walk into school like I thought I was better than everyone. And like, I remember just being in class and just like sitting and always just like looking forward and like people would try to talk to me and I'd just be like, like I just would not want to talk to them at all. And I feel really bad because I, I really did ruin my reputation in senior year. And like, um, you know, I feel bad because some of those kids, you know, they were assholes, but it's, it's all lighthearted. And mm -hmm. I was just, it's almost like what I was saying in middle school. It was like that all over again, right? Yeah. Um, and so... And then I finally talked to my therapist, or yeah, I talked to my therapist again in July of 2023. I'm like, I told her everything. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is the longest I felt like genuinely unhappy because before it was just, I was struggling with stress and um, anxiety with the OCD. I was depressed too, but this was genuine depression. I would wake up, no will to live. Like there was zero anything. What do, what do I do? There's nothing. I, I I did not care. I stopped posting on everything. I'm like, there's no reason for me to be here anymore. Um, and I talked to her and then finally, I just, I just out of nowhere said, oh yeah. And like also senior year, I didn't stop taking it consistently. She's like, wait, what? And then like, yeah. we went down that whole path of talking about it. And she's like, you need to take that every single day. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I started taking it every day. I didn't really notice anything. Um, I think it did improve a little bit. Um, but ultimately... I still had these things where some days I was really happy. Like I just wake up on top of the world, could do anything. Next few days, just so depressed. And we talked about it more and more. It kept happening. And we came to the conclusion that I have bipolar type 2. Um, and I'm still like confused about it because I never really showed symptoms before. But yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor. You probably don't have bipolar type 2. You really think so? I don't know. Not a not a doctor, but I do not think, in my opinion, you need to be on a bipolar medication. Not saying you should stop it abruptly or anything like that, but let's let's dive into this. So, just some basic questions. Have you ever gotten your vitamin D levels checked? No, I no, have not. Okay. no, never done your vitamin D levels. Have you ever done a full hormone panel? No, no, never done a full hormone panel. Have you ever done a full nutrient and mineral test? Like you know, you can see how you know your minerals and vitamins. None of the above. I haven't done Nothing. any of these tests. Have you ever done... Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I know the answer. Have you ever done a neurotransmitter test? They can test your neurotransmitters now, which would be pretty key for somebody struggling with mental health issues. I no? should probably do that, huh? No. Um, how much, like... Uh, how much human touch are you getting per day? And that's kind of a weird question. But, like, <laughs> I'm not talking about, like, just, like, girls. Like, just, like, you know, your friends. Like, you know, a pat on the shoulder. Or, like, a quick hug from a friend. Like, dapping somebody up. Like, is that a daily thing? Not really, but... I. It's weird. I don't mind it right now, but yeah, no, no. But I, I, I sometimes want to hang out and I can't, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I genuinely like just like, oh yeah, for sure. I think it's my yeah. personality. Certain weeks I'm like perfectly fine being alone, not really talking to anybody. And then some weeks I'm like, damn, I want to hang out with people. Yeah. Um, um, your, your diet, like, um, what is your diet like? Oh man, it's all over the place. It seems all over the place. Sometimes you'll be eating like healthy yeah. food. You'll be like, I'm making this like, you know, protein, like this simple like meat and vegetable thing or whatever it is. And other times it's like, I'm, I need to order McDonald's, you know, you know um, I, soda. 
some stuff like that. Like it so- sort of seems all over the place. You know, I have this weird feeling. I feel like I have multiple personalities. It's weird. Like some days I wake up as an example, like some days I'll be stressing about my calories. I'm like, dude, you, you ate 2000 calories. You're going to gain the weight back. Like you're, you're starting a bad habit. And the next day I'll eat like 2000. I'm like, dude, you're a man. Like you need these calories. Don't be such a pussy. Just go lift and then you'll be fine. And like, and then I'm like saying like, you think you're going to create a habit of this? Don't be such a pussy, bro. You can do whatever you want. You can control yourself. And then the next day it's like, it's always changing. So that's why some days you'll see me just like saying, I'm getting McDonald's. I'm going to be, you know, protein. Yeah. And then some days I'm like eating, you know, or I'll be depressed about how much I ate. And then some days I like eat terrible. Yeah. Um, it really does feel like I have some sort of personality thing, whether it's bipolar or not. Um, I don't know. I have you. So what what I would do if I w- if I were in your shoes, what I would do for thirty days is I would try to live a basic healthy life. Meaning for thirty days, I would wake up close to sunrise time, mm-hmm. and I would go to sleep close to sunset time. In the morning, I would wake up. I would drink water, you know, with some minerals. And I would get some, you know, light exposure, some basic movement outside, maybe a short walk, some mm-hmm. stretching, stuff like that. You know, I wouldn't have my phone for that first hour of the day. Your brain's very impressionable in that first hour of the day. I would not wake up and roll over and use the phone. Alarm goes off. I would leave it there on airplane mode. I know that's like a, the phone addiction. I have it too, man. I post, you know, I, I do content creation too. So I, I break that rule of mine sometimes as well. I would go do some breathing, Okay. And just like get the morning started with gratitude, with like thinking. You really need to start to get in, learn to talk to yourself. I hear you say this stuff like you're you're kind of all hot and cold on yourself in the way you talk to yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's like tough because you're the only person you're going to be with forever, mm-hmm. forever. It's not the phone. It's not what's going on out there. It's like literally just in here between here. That is what you have forever. You need to like get to know this person in here like deep on a deep level and you need to be nicer to that person and not like judge them when they, when they get sad, when they get, you know, you're like sort of like almost mean to yourself. If like, you're, you're not like, you're like, Oh my God, then I was depressed. And that, that like, that makes you like upset, you know? And that's a really common problem. Like, you know, when, when my dad died, you have to like, if I can easily see going through that, how somebody could completely alter the course of their life in a negative aspect if they don't know how to talk to themselves and react to stuff. And it's really important to know. So like in the morning, you can sort of practice that by doing gratitude. Basically, you just like say things that you're genuinely thankful for in your head. And you really think about those things. It can be little tiny things. It can be like, you're like, oh, I have my lizard, Nacho. I really like him. What do I like about him? I'm just like really stoked on that. It can be big things, you know, that you're happy about. It could be materialistic things. Oh, I got some new shoes. I'm really happy that I was able to even get those. Like, you need to start to get more perspective in your life. Like one of the greatest things that ever happened to me is my family uh, took me to an orphanage when I was 11 in Mexico. And we like did some like work there, whatever. That was really beneficial. Two years after that, they took me to India. And I got to see like the streets of India as like an 11 year old. Like my mom was very good at this. Like she'd be like, look at those fucking kids, right? Like, look, like you are extremely lucky. You grew up in Los Gatos. I grew up in the Bay Area as well. Nice home, all that. That, to really embody that deep down to your brain makes you a happier person because these problems that you're having constantly aren't that big. They're not big issues. And it's not to say that your issues aren't important, Mm -hmm. but you need to start to have more perspective because it, it can come from a place of gratitude and it can literally rewire how your brain starts to work. So framing these issues of you're like, oh, I haven't had my calories, you're stressed about something. I have these issues all the time. My video's not doing well. This, oh, this product, whatever. But in the back of my brain, I know that I'm good. I'm good. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, like deep, like in my brain. So that's really important. So that's like the morning, doing some of that gratitude practice, getting some real food into your body, you know, high protein meal, whatever feels good to you as long as it's real food. And then I would hit some type of physical activity. I would then lock in and get some work done because work... One thing is like, I'm trying to help you launch this protein cookie. Oh yeah. It's been a slow kind of like process in terms of like cranking stuff out. And like, I, you know, he's sitting on like a a kind of gold mine of these like protein cookies that we, you know, he could launch and I've helped kind of tee it up for him. And 
it's just, you know, it's no big deal. It's not a big problem, but it's just like me noticing, oh, damn, like you have a bit of trouble just like kind of cranking stuff out, locking in on some work and probably also due to your schedule. So then I would, you know, have that work schedule and then you have to start to do something a few times per week where you're going and seeing other people. So for me, that's jujitsu. You can take up jujitsu if you want. You could do pickup sports of any sort. You'll play basketball, right? You yeah. Play basketball. Find a pickup basketball thing or a basketball league of some sort and do that. You you have the money where you could find a basketball coach and meet with them once a week and then play pickup basketball twice a week. Yeah. Little I mean, things like that. Even just like seeing a person, like it could be anyone, like, or, or being pretty much forced to go do something. Like, 100%. Like, like it could either be hanging out with friends or it could even just be, yeah, going to a training with a coach. It's you're talking to someone. 100%. And you're not using your phone at that time. You're just doing something, you know, active. Uh, there's, there's no way to get around the way that we evolved as human beings. There are certain things that you need. And for so much of your life, I see so many instances and you telling me this kind of life story where you have gotten so separated from that. There's no way to beat that. There's no way. And I talk about this stuff all the time on my page. Like, I, you know, I like being introverted as well sometimes, but I'm like, I have to go to jiu-jitsu practice. I have to, I have to go see those people because I know that I will feel better after. Oh yeah. And so you have to, and if, if you live like that for 30 days, I think that would bring, you know, not even talking about any of the medication stuff, keep doing whatever you're doing there. If you did that for 30 days, I think that would completely change your life. Now, some of this other stuff that's like going on with your dad, like you're like, oh, I like being up at night because my dad is around. Was he born in the United States or is he from Turkey? No, he was born in Turkey. He was born in Turkey. He came here to the United States. Mm -hmm. Did well. Mm -hmm. Probably worked his ass off. Oh, yeah. Long nights. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, so, hey, man, this is maybe his time to just kind of enjoy his life and do his thing. And yeah. like, you know, like you, you have to have, it, I understand the frustration, but you just have to have like, more respect for that and like at the end of the day it's like dude if you needed a quiet place to film your videos or something like that like you you could find it yeah and yeah. the thing is i'm really bad with communication i'll just wake up at 4 p.m and then i'll be like really pissed off I'm like, dad dad can you be quiet i have to go film yeah and you know it just ruins it just ruins our yeah. relationship and then they get you know i mean yeah uh, but i wouldn't say you, you need to, you need to work on that then you need to work on your relationship with your dad and even his girlfriend and it has just come from a place of like forgiveness and more communication and and just realizing how lucky you are exactly on like a deep level like you really do need to recognize that at, at, like on on many different levels um as far as the meds go again this is personally what i would do is i would get a bunch of those lab tests done i would work with a doctor an actual doctor on weaning yourself off of those it's a long process it's not something you can just stop taking and even after this conversation, really, like, hey, damn, Brendan was saying some smart stuff. That does not mean you, oh, I'm going to skip a day of this medication. It just doesn't work like that. As you know, you were talking about that. Um, but there are doctors who specialize in weaning people off of those things. The overprescription and that whole industry, in my opinion, got a hold of you. I really do think that. You've been on basically a low-dose amphetamine for years. That can massively change how your brain works how your neurotransmitters work, how your sleep quality is. It can. And I really doubt if you need those. That's for a doctor who specializes in that to figure out. I think if you found that person, I could try to help you find like a doctor that that's what they do. But I have heard people talking about that and there's medical practices that that's what they do. And what they see commonly is people being able to wean themselves off of many different things. Not all. You might need those CD meds. You know, they might, they might conclude that. That's fine. However, I've seen it over and over again. They wean people off of these things and they feel better than ever. And yes, they are able to focus on stuff using different techniques. So that's kind of what I would do there. Um, I would definitely do some lab work, man, just some basic stuff. I, I, I'm really intrigued by that. I really want to do that. Um, and I was going to... Oh, I'm really interested about this 30-day thing you said. I actually mm -hmm. really want to try that. Um like I'm not even kidding. I'm I, I literally w I want to start that so badly. And I, I honestly like if anything, if I if I I want to upload a clip of that part. Yeah. I want to say that I actually want to start that um, because I've done stuff like that before, where I start like a journey of something, and it it's a lot of fun, and I'd love to do that actually. Um, 
Um, yeah, 30, 30 days hard. And, or, 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 there's, and like, it's 30 days of your life. People say it's too strict or something. It, it's oh. not like, like, you don't need to eat any fast food or eat any bullshit for 30 days. You don't need to drink soda for 30 days. You don't need to have a weird sleep schedule for 30 days of your life. You can do it. Um, 100%. Here's my issue, though, is whenever I would try to do stuff like that, where I instantly, like, or, or you know, like, I, I wake up one day, eat healthy, I go on a walk, uh, this, it leads to this thing where, like, I burn out instantly, and then I just get even worse than I was before. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things I'm so scared about. That's why I always try to slowly introduce new things. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could you could ease into it and and just kind of like start being a bit healthier. And then maybe by April, you do like a 30 day, like a little more strict. And I'm not saying it has to be what Brendan does. Like, it's yeah. not like, oh, you can't eat like a Starburst candy or something. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to get to a place where at least 90% of the food that you're putting into your body is good and your sleep patterns are pretty normal and you're just dialing in your health in multiple ways and then do something where you're like, you know what, I'm going to use a basketball coach for, you know, two days a week, like something like that. You have the money to do it. You should do something like that. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, um, actually like now that I think about it, like, um, I think it would be nice to like slowly incorporate new things. So maybe the first one could be the sleep, right? So once I get that dialed in, it's like I'm waking up at, you know, whatever this time going to bed that time I could say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to start with a healthy breakfast, right? Yeah. Um, and slowly introduce it because I like the 30 day idea. It's just for me, I, it sounds fun though. Like i really want to do that where one day I just start it. It's just that I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm. Oh yeah, you that. don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to dive right into it. I think uh, you, you need to learn more discipline overall. I think you're you're a little bit hesitant of what you can accomplish, and you're not somebody who has no discipline. To get two point eight million followers on TikTok, you have to have discipline. Um, there is no success and enjoyment of life and feeling good inside your own brain without discipline. Do There's you not? Uh, do you think I could do like a thirty day if I started like one day, or would like? Do you think I'm just like? being superstitious by saying like oh i'm scared that i'm gonna burn out and yeah you're already creating excuses for yourself that's true you already are it, dude this is basic stuff this isn't like some crazy thing saying to you for 30 days you need to sleep at a normal time eat mostly good food you know try doing 10 minutes of meditation a day and doing something active you know four days out of the week dude you 100 percent can do that um, that's not like a oh i hope i will hope he gets through this that's a 100% you could do that. And my question is, would I still be taking my all my Yeah, my yeah, you could take all your meds, do all that, yeah. And this is like, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to ask you this, even though like, you know, you don't really, it's not like this is your profession, but would you, actually, I, I think this would be better, but like, something I always wonder is, if I start my day with like, you know, no phone or anything, do yeah. I still take it in, right when I wake up or do I take it afterwards when I'm done doing that? But usually I think it's better to take it right when you wake up because then if you take it later, you usually go to bed later. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, the timing with ADHD meds obviously like isn't my thing, but yeah. I mean, what I would, what I would think is you, you know, when you wake up in the morning, your cortisol is naturally spiked. I would think you would probably want to wait at least an hour, you know, after waking to take mm -hmm. that maybe an hour or two maybe with some food, but that's, that's not my MO, but, um, yeah, yeah. you know, if anything, I'll, I'll, uh, talk about that on my outlandish cookie account. I'm, I'm really intrigued by that 30 day thing because I mean, it sounds fun and like, you know, yeah, look, if this stuff isn't working, you got to throw different, different shit at the wall, man. You got to try different things. And like, I, I, what I know for a fact is the sleep routine is not healthy. Oh yeah. No, there's nobody out there that would disagree with I'm, me on that. I mean, like when I when I think of my life, like it's not like I'm doing everything I can. I mean, if you think about it, I'm up all night. I play Minecraft for like six hours a day. I'm eating candy and crackers all day. Like all the, I mean, yeah, like uh, yeah. I mean, if you think of yourself, like if you zoom out and look at yourself from like a third person point of view, and you're like, ah, like sometimes I'm not really feeling as good as I as I know I could. I'm having some issues. Like, what is this person doing? They're playing six hours of Minecraft. They're eating candy. They live a nocturnal lifestyle. I don't like, you I know, don't they're, exercise. They're mad, don't exercise enough. They're mad at their dad. They're holding emotional resentment. Yeah. They, they might not have optimal vitamin D levels. They might have some hormone abnormalities going on. You know, we'll figure that out with some lab tests or whatever. Like this is the, the idea 
overall with health, in my opinion, is if you get someone to a state where your hormones are good, your vitamin D levels are good, you all ha you have all the nutrients and minerals that you need, you're staying hydrated, you are doing some form some things that are so researched, getting good sleep, meditation, exercising, these things are so researched, it's insane. Do all of that and then see how you feel. And then reassess and do that for 30 days. Do it for 40 days. See how you feel functioning, giving your body some of the inputs that we know it needs. And also another thing I forgot to mention, um, the, when I take Vyvanse, but I actually have a productive day, like genuinely productive, like, you know, actually taking care of myself and prioritizing, like very, very optimal, like 45 minutes of work, don't get stuck for three hours, but 45 minutes, go do this, go get food, uh, work a little bit more, make a video, play, even play a game for 30 minutes. Um, I, I tend to not feel like any crash or feel like, you yeah. know, the mental things. Uh, obviously not, like, I'm not saying like, oh, I mean, I could stay on Vyvanse because I, I think one day, like, I definitely would want to not. Yeah, I think you should eventually work with a doctor to sort of reassess where you're at with a lot of that stuff. But um, I think I think rather than, I think it should first, I fix my habits before. 100%, yeah. Fix yeah. It before trying to wean off a medication when I'm already in a bad For sure. habit state. Yeah, and you need to work with a, a dialed-in professional to, oh, wean, yeah. to help you wean off that stuff and figure out what you need and don't there. But the basic things of health, what we just talked about, you you need to start doing. You know, we'll line you up with all the, the you know, the basic supplements, magnesium, electrolytes, yeah. protein, just stuff like that. And that's something I wanted to, like... I'll, I'll probably like ask you off camera, but especially vitamins. I want to start taking those daily. So yeah. uh, just what I have to take. I don't really know. Yeah, there's some basic stuff that you should be taking. Vitamin D, magnesium. Um, when you're working out, do your electrolytes. You should probably have a protein shake daily just because like to get your protein up. Um, there's some basic stuff that we can dial you in with. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, hold yourself accountable with your followers, man. Like they like to see, they want to see you do this. That's why we're here. Like a lot of people have been like, dude, they just say you need to get dialed in, you need to lock in. And but it's an overall health thing. The thing is, like, with this stuff, like, I tend to, you know, this sounds, it sounds far-fetched. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to do the 30-day thing. But I tend to, like, I tend to have a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm not, like, one of those people, except for one time, I did, like, not live up to my word. Usually I live up to my word, though, when I say I'm going to start this new thing, except for one thing, and that was sleeping on my back. I said I was going to do that for the rest of this. I said, I said one month of sleeping mm -hmm. on my back. I woke you, up. you can sleep on your back or side. Stomach obviously is bad, but there's a way to sleep on your side that's fine. I slept on my back one night the entire night. I woke up with the worst back pain the next day. I'm like, there's no way I can do that again. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. terrible, terrible. Uh, but I definitely do want to try that again one day. Um, so 30 days. We're gonna we're gonna dive into that. Yeah, I'll definitely. I, I'm I'm super interested in that, guys. And you know, I was just thinking about maybe I should slowly wean into it. But like Brennan said, like you got to have discipline. Um, I got to stop looking at everything from like a superstition way because that's going to hold me back. Yeah. If I'm like, oh, no, no, you can't just wake up one day and have a good lifestyle because then you're going to burn out. Like, what? No, like, I got to, I got to, I'm out. a human. I can do what I want. Like, yeah. And, it, and you, you can't think that you're throwing yourself completely off if, let's say, you eat one McDonald's meal or you have some candy or whatever it is. Like, obviously, guys in my content, I'm pretty strict about what I do personally. Um, but with like somebody like like this, like you don't need to throw everything in the trash if you have like a, a bad thing. I believe in the 90-10 rule. I'm not one of these 80-20 guys where you, know, you can do 20% of your, your stuff, junk food. If if I, I mean, I do 99-1 is honestly what I do. But like, yeah, 90-10. Like if you have a little bit of bullshit, is that under 10% of what you're going to do in a month? That's totally fair. A lot of these foods that and things that we're talking about didn't even exist until recently. So to think as a human being you can't survive without them or you really need them is literally bullshit. Yeah. Because we've gotten to this point without any of these things. So you need to start to dial it in. We're going to dive into some current events with Cookie King. Current event time. You ready for these? I don't even know what they are. I never know what they are. He just picks some random current events. We'll just riff on them. All right. And are we going to do the comments too? Yeah, we can do some of the comments. Yeah. I bet. So. Let's do current events and comments. You said you were trying to box Jack Dory. Uh huh. Do you have any thoughts on Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? Uh, to be honest, I heard about that. I don't really know what it is. I'm pretty sure Mike Tyson called him out. I don't. I thought it was the other way around, where Jake Paul would have done that because he's usually that type of person. Uh, he did it with Conor McGregor too. Um, I don't really know what to think. I think this whole boxing stuff became really oversaturated. 
Um, yeah, I, dude, uh, Mike Tyson is 57 years yeah, old. He's 50, 50, I think he turns 58 by the time this fight will happen. Um, I think it's it's gross for Jake yeah. Paul to even take this fight. And what is the upside for Jake Paul? If he knocks out Mike Tyson... You're just knocking out an old man. Out, and then people will, will uh, post these Mike Tyson clips of him training and be like, dude, Jake Paul screwed. It's Mike Tyson hitting mitts with a very square stance even. Like, you know, I'm not a boxing aficionado, but it's like anyone can look cool hitting mitts. If you want me to post a clip of me hitting mitts, you're like, damn. But I don't know boxing in depth, but you can look like you do when you're hitting mitts. So I think it's a problem. I'm it, Hey, we're both going to all watch the fight. You know what I mean? I'll have uh, people over and watch the fight here. So I guess that's what Jake Paul thinks of as winning. A lot of people are going to buy it. But at some point, like, you know, this as a content creator, it's not like everything you like. There's these videos that people do of like kind of like almost shitting on fat people at the store. Like they'll go find somebody who's fat and like really like kind of like be like, you know, like blah, blah, blah. and I never wanted to do those because like, yeah, that would give me a lot of views. But it's not like something I want to do. Oh, yeah. So I turned it into the soda thing. If I get people to quit soda, I feel like those are like more fun, yeah. like like cool videos. But yeah, not everything needs to be about views, in my opinion. Yeah, no, uh, Jake Paul, like, I always, you know, this is just, I'm talking about Jake Paul in general. Like, I, I always thought he's like a pretty smart guy. I don't think he's a bad person at all. Um, I think... Actually, I'm really proud of him, especially him and Logan with this boxing stuff because they're 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 crushing it. Yeah. I I'm pretty sure they're the reasons this whole influencer. No, they are. Yeah, because they it are. started with Logan Paul and KSI, if I'm mm -hmm. not wrong. And ever since now, there's all these things about influencer boxing. They started something crazy. I'm not really a big fan of the influencer boxing. Uh, I I only watched like one, which was the KSI and Logan Paul. I remember that was so hyped up. Um, but you know, I I, I think it's really cool, and I think. It, it's a good cause because what yeah. you're doing is you're calling out influencers, whether it's fake beef or real beef, whatever. Then they train for months. Yeah. They, no, they, they turn yeah. their life around. They get a, sh they become shredded. They be from some of them were like really big before, but then now they're like shredded. They're lean. Yeah. It's all for a good cause. I mean, yeah. I, I don't see what's bad about it. I'm just, I don't really watch boxing that much, but yeah, I mean, the Mike Tyson thing's a little crazy though, but. Hey. Yeah, if we see Mike Tyson flatline, that's just not a good look. So, yeah. yeah. Do you keep up with politics? Uh, do you have an opinion on Biden versus Trump? From an 18 year old's perspective, what do you what do you think? Biden, Trump, like what what do you think? So I actually like for the longest time never understood politics. I still don't. I I don't think anybody does. No, like so I don't. I never understood how some people like know everything. Like when people say, "Oh, like Joe Biden is bad," and people say, "Oh, Trump was way better." I don't know the reasons. I don't know why people say they hate Trump. I don't know. I don't know why people say they like Joe Biden. I don't know. Like, I'm not saying I don't support them or I don't know why they like them. Like, I genuinely have no knowledge because there's so much stuff to it, so much lore, so many stories, um, so many different reasons. So I never really kept up with that. But other political things, like, especially on Twitter, I see a lot, a lot of these accounts. There's like either like far right accounts and then there's like uh, far left accounts. And then I'll see them both on my feed. Just, you know, they just show up. I actually follow them because I like to see the perspective. Um, and it's, it's really just like, you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Well, I think a lot of people, a lot of maybe, it, maybe you're going to get involved in politics on the, the TikTok ban is on the table. What do you think about TikTok getting potentially banned? Uh, yeah, that's crazy. And, you know, I told myself I'll never become political. Um, the only thing, like, I never talk, talk about politics, but this TikTok ban thing, I'm not going to say, like, oh, you know, of course it's from a Republican who's, uh, that is not my thing. I'm just going to be like, who are these people? Why are they doing this? And I'm never going to, like, choose a side. Um, I know some people kind of wish I, I would say what side. I just genuinely don't know. But what I do know is it's also kind of delusional at some point. It becomes like a fallacy because what happens is you start to support one side so much that even if there's a genuine flaws, bad things, you convince yourself it's not true. Oh, yeah. And that goes for anything. It kind of happened to me with The Walking Dead. I, I, I convinced myself, I'm like, I love this show so much. When something bad would happen, I would tell myself, I would tell people like, no, that wasn't bad. You're just, you're confused. So that's what I'm saying. That's what politics mainly is. And that's why I could never fall down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, it's it's dark. Uh, so I'm never going to get into politics. But this TikTok ban thing, if you see it as politics, then yeah, I guess uh, uh, I'm pretty pissed about that. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to say like, oh, yeah, of course it's that person. That's the person that 
did this bill. No, it's just like I just make fun of them because they're old. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they are all old. They're all old as hell, man. They don't know what's going on. Next question. Like, why The Walking Dead? So, yeah, what's your, what is your obsession with The Walking Dead? It's actually really interesting. So I always had these hyper fixations, but I just remember back in August of 2021, um, I remember just like walking by my. No, no, no. It was this. I was on Twitter and then I just saw hashtag the walking dead's final season i'm like holy shit i haven't heard the walking dead in so long i was clicked on it and i just saw how different the walking dead was like there were there was like soldiers in suits there was like you know all these characters like in this like really advanced civilization i'm like i'm like whoa like what happened i remember them being at a prison and like all run down and all this stuff i'm like and a lot of people, they see that and like, bro, what happened to The Walking Dead? So mad, bad now. I was so intrigued by it. Mm. And then I saw a clip. It was so goofy. This is like the first clip I saw after like researching it again. It was a scene where like, um, it was from season 11, episode seven, where this like, basically this, there was this brat kid. His name was Sebastian. And then like, so this guy, Eugene, he's been alive for like the longest time. He's killing walkers. And then like, he accidentally stabbed one and got blood on Sebastian's girlfriend. And then the Sebastian guy was just like flipping out at him like a rich kid. I'm like, there's no way this is The Walking Dead. It was like HD camera. I'm like, I want to watch the show and see how it gets to this point. I was so intrigued by it. Uh, I, I saw it as goofy, but cool too. And I was so intrigued to the point where I literally watched all the spoilers even yeah. before watching it. So I knew everything that happened, but I genuinely loved the show. Um, and I, I really started to love it because... I really like things that are seen as people don't, a lot of people don't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm always someone that loves it. Yeah, yeah. Because I like to defend things that um, I think don't get, that they, they get too much hate. So after I was watching The Walking Dead, uh, you know, I'd binge it like all day. Um, it's the first time I felt accomplished about watching a show because I could never watch shows before. 11 seasons is a lot. And so I'm like, dude, let me just talk about it. Like I'm obsessed with it now because the whole thing was to figure out how this stuff happened. And then I watched it all happen. And I'm like, yo, this is, this is sick. And I really wish I didn't watch spoilers because there were some insanely, like if you haven't seen spoilers, I'm telling you, like some scenes are just genuinely so shocking and so amazing. Like I really wish I hadn't spoiled them for myself. You know what's crazy? Have you ever heard the Nebraska joke for my... My, my, you, okay, good. Uh, but there's this whole thing of like, I'm, people think I'm from Nebraska. This is like video. It's a really old story, but people say, bro, try to sneak in Nebraska. It's like your comments you get, uh, making you biggest. Yeah. What, what even is that? Like, dude, I don't know. To get that, I am. There's like one guy that does it a lot. We might need to ban him, but what, like, did you ever say that before? No. Wait, that's actually no. insane. What? Oh, it's insane. Uh, so yeah. for me, it's like, I, I made a video where I was like saying, if you ain't from California, New York, Florida, or Nebraska, then where are you at? Like, as if like, those were the yeah, cool yeah, states. Yeah, and yeah. I snuck in Nebraska in there. The reason I did that is because I was watching The Walking Dead, and this was one of the only scenes that I hadn't spoiled for myself. It was basically like they were in a bar, and then Rick was in a bar with Herschel and Glenn. I'm, I'm just saying them. I know you probably don't know them, but it's just like for people that are watching, they were in a, this is actually gonna be a really good clip. So Rick Herschel and Glenn were in a bar and then these two other people came in, just these survivors. And at the time, Herschel didn't really like Rick because he thought he was just trying to like take his farm from them and like, you know, overtake and live with them because Rick really wanted to stay there. But then these two guys come in and then they were just like, can we come to the farm with you? And then Rick's just like, no, that's not gonna happen. And at one point, one of the guys is like, yeah, here in Nebraska, they have like um, soldiers or whatever. And then at one point, like it was out of nowhere. The guy was like, um, "Like if if we can't come with you, then where do you suggest we go?" And then Rick's like, "I don't know. I hear Nebraska's nice." Mm. And then all of a sudden, the other guy is like, "Laugh!" He pulled out his gun, and then Rick just like pulled it out, shot them both in the head. And I remember just being like, "What just happened?" Like I was like dying, kind of laughing, and then just like I was so shocked because that was the only scene I hadn't spoiled for myself. Imagine if I hadn't spoiled all the other scenes for myself, like. I probably would have came up with so much more jokes and stuff, but I just remember watching that episode. Like it stuck with me for like, I think a few months. I'm just like, it was like zero to 100 instantly. Like it, it was genuinely one of the best scenes I've ever seen in all of television. Well, shout out to, to the walking dead. Yeah. Um, all right. Next question. <laughs> uh, I see you guys' content. You guys are like looking to buy new cars and stuff. Like mm. what cars you guys are looking to buy? 
Like, yeah, I, so I'm sort of looking into getting a new car in really? the next couple months. Yeah, I mean, I got the Subaru right now, but... Uh, what are you going to get? You know, like, I'm making more money and stuff. I'm, uh, so I want like a luxury SUV of some sort because I like um, the safety that comes with them. Oh, yeah. Being higher up, being in a heavier car, they're just safer. Dude, I, I like SUVs, yeah. Yeah, like, I, you know, driving is sketch out there. Um, mm. You know, so I kind of like the Porsche Cayenne. Porsche I need to, I need to like test drive some of them. I like the Lexus GX, the kind of more boxy like Lexus oh, SUV, yeah. um, which is similar to a Toyota 4Runner, but I kind of want something more luxury in the 4Runner. And then also I want to look at some BMW X5s and just sort of that that series there. Um, but yeah, what are you what are you looking into getting? Uh, you know, I'm actually, I'm not really, you know, I I had this whole joke going on. People. Uh, thought so you have you have the Tesla, but Lance was saying you you kind of don't like driving on the highway. Did you drive on the highway to get here? Oh yeah, you know I kind of got over that fear. Um, Good. You know, it's, I think it's just something that takes some time. Um, yeah, no, you know the Tesla's fine. Um, yeah, you know I'm fine with the Tesla. Uh, the the um, I made a whole joke about getting an i8, uh, but that's not real. I I I I don't know anything about cars. Oh, you know. what? <sighs> I wish I talked about my friend here, but my friend Ian Rocks, I just want to give him a quick shout out. He actually, besides The Walking Dead, he is like 99% of jokes I make because he'll say something. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, this goes a long way. Um, yeah, this guy brought The Walking Dead back into the... Uh... I, I, I gotta, I gotta, can I t say one more thing about it? Like, sure. So Ian, he's actually the one who made that video before me he said like if you ain't from these places and he snuck in vermont i remember i saw that and then i saw the walking dead scene the day before i'm like yo yo i'm gonna do nebraska so i literally like, took it from him and he never really cared he like because we were really good friends and then ian just does these really subtle jokes that are so funny so there's a character named daryl in the walking dead and then he, he's Man, like, maybe this dude does need adhd meds bro <laughs> maybe he does need adhd meds Dude. We're, at, we're talking about cars. <laughs> um, dude. Okay, listen, listen, listen. What car do you want? Um, <laughs> I, 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 well, I just got really bad deja vu for some reason. I feel like I've, I don't know what just happened. Uh, but uh, I don't want to. I'm, I'm fine with the fine Tesla. Fine with the Tesla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're going to the next question. Yeah, yeah, All right. Uh, I love it. Neon kick the kick situation where you get oh, kicked yeah. off kick and then you brought back on you like apologize wait so, so yeah neon like went in on some like 10 year old kid on back? kick and they banned him i think it was bs them banning him from kick dude i just dude i, I don't know that guy's just like you know i actually saw neon i used to watch his videos when he had like three thousand subscribers uh he was like a 2k rager he was yeah cosplaying as Ronnie 2 k son, the creator of um, 2K, he's because they're both Indian, so it's yeah. it really funny. Um, I don't know, dude. I, I feel like Neon is like, you know, I, dude, I, I don't know. He seems like really just caught up with the clout. Like every time he apologizes, I it does not feel genuine whatsoever. He's just like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, Chad, I, I shouldn't have done that. I think he knows what he's doing. Um, you know, um, I met so him, met consumed. him briefly in LA. Seems a little bit different off camera than he is on mm -hmm. camera. Um, something he knows what he's doing, and I don't, I don't think the ban off kick was like real. The, these guys are just manipulating, you know, yeah. twelve to fourteen year olds to make them think. Oh my God! There always has to be drama in that streaming world. Uh, there always has to be drama, so they just manufacture that shit. Yeah, and one of these days, I really hope to actually meet like Neon and Jack Doherty. Like, you know, if I just stumble across them, I really want to because I feel like I have such a bad perception of them, and I. I don't like that, that, um, cause I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but you know, I, I, every time I see their streams, I just feel like they're so consumed by it, but you know, I, I really like wish I could meet them and understand them because yeah. I can read people pretty well. And you know, if I just talk to them for like a minute, I can tell like, okay, yeah, they're just kind of like caught up with this clout thing. And I, honestly, I don't blame them cause I've been in that position before too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just I, I don't I don't say I don't like neon actually, and and same with Jack Doherty. I, that was all just a, a part of the act, but I think both of them are good people at heart. They're just you know yeah, they're caught up in that. They're caught up shit. in that, and I can't blame them. It happens, you know. Yeah. Should we do some comments? Yeah, sure. Okay. Someone asked when are his cookies going to be available for purchase. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, yesterday I actually did a really long meeting. Uh, we're getting the web. Yeah, we're getting the website set up. 
I yeah. just didn't know if I should talk about it, but whatever. Um, we're getting the website set up. Uh, the whole, like the big part of that, that was like the big thing we need to get done was just what we wanted. So now that team's going to work on it. Um, I have to send some logos over some designs and then they're going to get done with the design and they're going to make a landing page. So, but I'd say no longer than eight weeks. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, he has a really good protein cookie. I mean, it's gluten-free, it's paleo, um, and it's like packed with protein. So yeah, mm -hmm. stoked on that. Take bro in for three months and see his progression. It's kind of what we were talking about, but I want to do that one month thing. So be ready for that, guys. I definitely do want to talk about that. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's like if he stuck to a good 30 day, just like real food, exercise, and getting his circadian rhythm dialed in, you know, hydration. And I really think like, adding in some stuff like basketball or whatever it is like is there any other sports that you like mostly basketball yeah you know i'm i'm i can do whatever i i honestly yeah i don't really train jujitsu yeah i mean i'd love to in san jose i'd love to try that man anything i love new stuff i love yeah. trying new stuff yeah you might need some jujitsu ah that sounds I fun man it. that why not <laughs> right that sounds fun let's see here advice for young men struggling with depression and adhd uh, I'll give my take and then yeah. you can give your take. Uh, depression and ADHD. So first things first, I don't think your ADHD is uh, something you should be struggling with. See that as a benefit, I, especially with talking with Brendan. I was seven years old before, I mean, way before I t took medication, I was making all these YouTube videos with high effort. And now I feel like I have to be on it to make videos. It's just not true. Uh, it, it's it's because um, I clearly had a work ethic beforehand. It's just ADHD. I don't even know if it's like a real thing, but let's say you do have higher energy, whatever, that energy goes to stuff you like, and that's fine. If it, okay, a answer me this. If it weren't for the modern day school system, would ADHD exist? Oh, no, see, the, absolutely not. The thing is... Like hunter-gatherer tribes, if there was somebody with a bit too much energy, would they be like, exactly. you have ADHD? If anything, those people would be beneficial because like, like imagine it's a tribe and they have to go hunting. The person with ADHD would probably like, you know, like they'd be really like intrigued and like do all yeah. this stuff. And it, would, it just, it wouldn't be a thing, you know, it, 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 it is a thing because of the modern school system. I think what ADHD is, you can obviously have more energy, but combined with the fact that more energy and also maybe you just genuinely don't like school that energy whenever you're in class you don't like it the energy goes somewhere else so you probably start fidgeting or you start talking with other people um you know dude at the end of the day like bro school i think school is just I'm, I'm, i was so i i hated school man and Yes, it's. T I mean, oftentimes you have a teacher that's severely underpaid. They're not enthusiastic, and then you combine that with you not caring about the subject. And you know, from a health point of view, a lot of these kids don't want to be sitting down in an artificially lit classroom. Oh they want to be outside. You know, it's how human beings evolved. Like, and maybe they're sent to school eating pop tarts and you know sugary cereal, which we know increases symptoms of ADHD. It just messes with your brain. And then you're going to tell that kid, hey, sit there, you know, and just be good. That's not really how it works. So um, I don't really think, you know, yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the, the one thing that I really sympathize for people with ADHD or whatever, I, I don't, I hate using it because it's very overused, saturated term, ADHD. I have ADHD uh, because I think genuinely people do struggle with that, um, whether, you know, just, you know what I'm saying is energy, but it doesn't go to the right places. Um, I feel I sympathize with people because school is what literally makes that condition very bad because it's very, very hard to actually like succeed in school. I was so close to not graduating because of it. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, what is there to do? Like, there's really not much you can do. And I think it's mainly the school system because a after before school was ever like an issue for me, middle, I mean, elementary school, of course, grades didn't matter to me. Uh, I was getting bad grades, but everything was good in my life. I wasn't a dumb kid by any means. I was not dumb. I, I, I'd actually consider myself maybe smart. Like, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I think I was pretty smart for my age. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's a benefit. And now I'm like consumed by this thought that I need it. And it's, yeah. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, I would think. And then on the depression side of things, oh, yeah. uh, on the uh, guy's question, like, um, I, again, I think it does come back to gratitude and then overall health. I mean, they've done studies where people with depression have 
higher uh, inflammatory biomarkers. There appears to be a connection between just overall inflammation and depression. Um, so like obviously dial in your health and all the ways that I talk about that can help, um, vitamin D status, stuff like that, getting enough sunlight, but also from come from a place of gratitude of like, if you're writing this on an iPhone and watching TikTok, which you are, you're extremely lucky in just your situation in life. And you have to really start to think about that on a deeper level. And that can sometimes help depression. I already finished the electrolytes, by the way. Damn, electrolytes gone mango. Let's do one more question. Okay. Yeah. Um, and by the way, for the depression thing you're saying, do the 30 day challenge with me. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Go. Let's see what happens. Um, okay. This one's a little interesting. Cause I'd actually, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts too. Does he eat organic food? Um, actually, I'll say right now, um, my parents were, old, my dad especially, is always about organic, whatever, this and that, for all, as long as I can remember. But I never really, like, cared that much. I mean, I preferably buy organic, but I, I, I don't, like, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. I, I do try to buy organic stuff when I can, and especially now that I have the money, I buy organic. But it's actually not one of the like you know top things for me for health. Uh -huh. Obviously, more and more of our food is getting sprayed with pesticides. Yeah. And when you look into what glyphosate, which is a common herbicide, can do for your gut, and now we know the gut brain has a connection. I think we're going to find out more and more about that. That consuming this thing that kills bacteria isn't really good for your gut, which isn't good for your brain. It's not good for you. Um, so I do try to buy organic stuff when possible. But what's more important is getting good high quality proteins in, good high quality fruits and vegetables. And if that means to you that you can't afford organic or, you know, like, it's not something that I overly worry about. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, that's kind of what I was wondering. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, that's that kind of a short one. Um, oh, oh, okay. This one's pretty good. Ask him about his Clash PR YouTube channel and how he handled getting billions of views while not being monetized. Uh, yeah, so, you know, at first I was like, I don't care. I love the walk. What, what, so what is Clash Pro? What is it? What, what is this channel? Uh, so it's basically, I started after finishing Fear the Walking Dead, which is a spinoff of The Walking Dead. Uh, I, I just started, you know, I started making shorts where I would just upload the clips, but, you know, make it really yeah. nice and phone. I mean, people like that. They could just see a quick clip. Like, imagine you remember a scene and then you just see a short that's compiled into 30 seconds, highly edited. Um, and I started doing those and then they started popping off like a lot. Um, um, and, you know, and then I realized it's not monetizable because it's reused content. Oh, yeah. Uh, no matter how much edits I did to it. But I didn't care because I loved the, the feeling of getting views and stuff. And so I was uploading like four times a day. I was putting a lot of work into it, more than Cookie King. I stopped posting on Cookie King as much. Um, I didn't care about the monetization at the time. And then I think like a year after that, I had like a million subscribers and a billion views. I'm at like 2.6 million subscribers. I upload like once a month on it now. Um, I think I didn't care about not being monetized until I got monetized on TikTok. And then I realized like, holy crap, how much I got scammed. Well, not scammed, but how much... I should have realized how much of a problem this was because I also made long form videos that I would be up all night editing for what though? Like I'm, yeah. I'm not making anything off that and it led to a big burnout and just, yeah. Um, I think now I, I'm grateful I did it though because 2.6 million subscribers is- uh, Yeah, no, that's, that's I mean, awesome. Even, even though it's not like I have like a, I say, I mean, actually, you know, a lot of people get really happy when I post again, like, oh, clashed with another edit because- I like to say I stand out from other people's edits because I, I really put a lot of work into it. But yeah, um, that's that's probably how I deal with it. It's just I'm like, yeah, I don't put it on my priority list. But some days I'm like, hey, I want to make a Clash PR edit. I'm not yeah. going to get anything out of it, but it's fun, you know. And that, that, honestly, during that 30 days, probably every like three days I'll do it because I, I like it. I like doing it. So it's yeah. nice to always be doing new stuff, you know. Facts. To summarize today, we delve into a lot. I appreciate you sharing a lot of that stuff, man. Yeah, man. I, I some of that isn't isn't easy to share, but like I think it's gonna help a lot of people. There's a there's a lot of people just like you out there that yeah. have struggled with so you know similar stuff and like they just want to kind of dial stuff in. So it's really good that you shared that. Thirty day challenge. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very open to trying that. Um, I you got to you got to do some because it has to be like a thing of like you know you can get ease into it and stuff but like no no once no you start that 30 days you have to lock in and um, just do it yeah i definitely want to upload a clip from the podcast beforehand oh yeah and are you oh actually i'll ask that off camera but um yeah um so yeah 30 30 day challenge i think guys 
if you're watching this and you're struggling with some form of mental health, I think it's really important to understand the brain and the body are not separate things. Modern day psychiatry tries to separate them. If your brain here, we can just, just treat the brain and it doesn't really matter what happens to the body. That is not modern science. They are linked. Your body, your mind, your spirit is one thing. So you need to start to dial in everything and it can all come together and make life great. You're not going to feel happy every second of the day. That's not achievable. And you shouldn't feel happy every second of the day, but you should learn to love and feel good about all the emotions you get throughout the day, throughout the week, and just be the best version of yourself. So Cookie King, I appreciate you coming on. Any thank last you. words? Uh, thank you for having me. And I really hope some of you guys gain some knowledge from this and I don't know, gain some insight. And I hope this helps some of you either if you're struggling with addiction or you know, if you're struggling with depression, whatever it is, or if you don't know what to do after high school, I hope this helps you out. I'm just like you guys. I'm not perfect. I didn't know what I was doing for a long time. And if you look up to me, then I hope that makes you feel a little bit better and hopefully you can figure it out. So facts. Thank you. Wise words. We'll see you next week. Peace. See you guys. Bye.